What a difference a day makes. Yesterday, Holy Saturday, great silence, a stillness. As an ancient homily for Holy Saturday declares, the whole earth was silent because Christ was asleep in his tomb. Let us imagine for a moment that we were with Mary Magdalene as she goes in the dark to Jesus' tomb. I am sure her darkness had as much to do with her heavy heart as it did with the natural darkness of the early morning hours. Having been touched by Jesus' healing mercy, Mary accepted Jesus as the one who could satisfy her deepest desires. But a cruel death had taken him from her. In the darkness of loss and grief that we experience when a loved one is taken from us, Mary goes to the tomb. She had hoped to be there for a while, to linger with the Lord's body. But she discovers that the seal on the tomb had been opened and the tomb was empty. The Lord has been taken from the tomb. Where have they taken him? There are elements in each of our lives that lead to discouragement and lost hope. Broken relationships, ill health, economic worries, fear of the unknown, loneliness, and concern for our loved ones are sometimes heavy crosses to bear. Discouragement and lost hope are a more profound darkness than the lack of physical sight. They are the inner darkness that looks for answers and meanings that will bring light to the challenges and suffering, the difficulties and reversals that are a part of every life. Last evening, at the Easter Vigil, when the Paschal candle was blessed, we prayed, may the light of Christ rising in glory dispel the darkness of our hearts and minds. And in the glorious Easter proclamation, the exultate, we prayed, may this candle persevere undimmed to overcome the darkness of the night and found still burning by the morning star who never sets, Christ the Son, who coming back from death's domain has shed his peaceful light on humanity. Easter, the feast of feasts, dispels the darkness, picks up and fortifies our hope. St. Paul said it well in our second reading. Think of what is above, not what is of earth. For you have died and your life is hidden with Christ in God. Yes, despite the darkness that ails us physically or spiritually, despite the broken and sinful features of our lives, despite the deep wounds and lack of unity in our world, God is present. He lives and we live in him. Yes, today is different. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad. Christ is no longer asleep in the tomb. Christ, our hope, is arisen. He is our light and our joy. This is the special grace of Easter. And we cannot keep the good news to ourselves. The gospel for today stops short of telling us the rest of Mary's story in the garden. When Peter and John depart from the garden, Mary remains weeping because she cannot find the Lord. 
She meets a gardener and inquires if he has carried the Lord away. The supposed gardener calls Mary by name and she recognizes Jesus, the one she is seeking. Immediately, Mary goes to the disciples and announces, I have seen the Lord, and she tells them everything Jesus told her. Mary's telling of the good news is a task that has been passed on to us. Quoting Pope Francis, the heartbeat of the risen Lord is granted as a gift, a present, a new horizon. The beating of the heart of the risen Lord is given to us, and we are asked to give it in turn as a transforming force, as the leaven of a new humanity. Each year, the church in her wisdom teaches us anew about the treasures of our faith. The retelling of the story of salvation is essential in keeping our faith alive. For 50 days, we will journey through the Easter season. What a blessed opportunity to cherish our faith, reflect on the joy and the hope that it offers to us, and renew our efforts to proclaim Christ as the eternal light that dispels the darkness and shows us the way to joy, hope, and hope, now and everlasting life in eternity. The Lord has risen. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad. The first gift that the Lord gave to his disciples after the resurrection was the gift of peace. May he fill your hearts and your home with that same gift of peace. A happy and blessed Easter to all. Know that you are remembered in a very special way in this Mass and at every Sunday Eucharist.